Hello YouTube, um, my name is National Master Robert Plunkett. This is going to be my introduction video to the beginning of my opening series. Um, and it's been a while since I've done a video, so hopefully I'll be hitting you with a few videos, um, uh, hopefully a few videos a week um, from now on if I get a chance. Um, so my introduction to my opening series is going to start with what I like to call the preparation paradox. And this is a problem that every chess player kind of faces at every level. Um, because we are not machines, uh, we are not computers. Computers, they just get programmed with openings and they know them. And human beings, we actually have to memorize them, we have to go to the work of learning them, we have to go to the work of changing them, and it's very difficult. And a lot of times we're faced with a question of do we study um, one variation very deeply, or do we try to prepare for everything? And the reason I call this a paradox, the reason I say this is a paradox of sorts, it's because most of the openings that we consider the best openings to give us the best chance to get some type of advantage also are the openings that require us to prepare for the broadest number of responses. Um, an example is after, say, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. We have what we call the Roy Lopez. The Roy Lopez for white is respected as possibly the best chance for white to get some type of advantage with the white pieces. I think even Gary Kasparov said as much at one point. The problem with bishop b5 is also that it's also its strength, which is it's a highly flexible move. It puts indirect pressure on the center of the board. It allows you to um, create the most ideal pawn structure later on in the game. It also allows the greatest number of responses from black in terms of how black can reply to this. Black can reply with the Berlin defense with knight f6, black can reply with g6, black can reply with d6, bishop c5, knight on g to e7. He can reply with a6. I believe I mentioned, I might have mentioned d6. He can reply with d6 or even f5, which is the Kobus Lehman variation, that's called the Steinitz variation. And all these moves are playable. Actually, even knight d4, the Bird's variation is playable. Um, after a6, that can lead to a number of variations. After that, that can lead to an exchange Ray Lopez. It can lead to an open Ray Lopez. It can lead to a closed Ray Lopez. And it can lead to a martial counterattack. And it can lead to several different variations of the closed Ray Lopez and several different iterations of the open Ray Lopez. So it, this is a, a massive um, area that you have to be prepared for as white if you want to play a Ray Lopez. You have to be prepared for all this stuff. Whereas black has the flip side of that preparation paradox. Black only needs to prepare one line. He needs to prepare one line that he specializes in, that he likes, that he believes gives him good chances. And he can prepare that line very, very deeply. And this will be the problem that you'll face with openings as you get to higher and higher levels. At lower levels, it's not much of a problem because neither player is very well prepared. So they will make a lot of mistakes in the opening and typically you'll be on your own after the first six or seven moves anyway. At the higher levels, you'll run into a great deal of difficulty because you will have to be just as deeply prepared with your broad preparation as somebody is with their narrow preparation in order to get any type of advantage or just sometimes in some cases just to try to survive. Um, so that's why Players will throw other openings into their repertoire instead of bishop b5. Sometimes people will play a move like bishop c4. And again, this is to try to flip that preparation paradox kind of on its head. Bishop c4 or, say, the scotch with d4 are openings that offer white slightly less of an advantage. But the upside is that you're putting that immediate pressure on black center. You're taking the flexibility out of the position. You're determining the structure immediately. And because of this, this limits the number of replies that black has at this point. Black can really only play knight f6, bishop c5, or maybe bishop b4 are the only moves that I've really even seen in this position. And that greatly simplifies your preparation. You only need to really be prepared for maybe three lines, maybe, maybe a fourth one, maybe queen h4 if they decide to do something crazy like that. And this uh, greatly simplifies your, your preparation. Now you don't have to prepare for 20 lines, now maybe you have to prepare for three to four. And that's much easier to create a deep preparation in all of these lines. Okay, so you can only you only have to prepare for three or four lines, so now you can have much deeper preparation in the Scotch, whereas you have to have much broader preparation in the Ray Lopez. We run into this with black as well. It's not just a problem for the white player. Sometimes the best lines for black also run into the same preparation paradox. The line that is considered one of the best ways for black to meet 
deep on openings is called the Nimzo Indian. And the Nimzo Indian is the same thing. After Bishop B4, effectively, Black has thrown the ball in White's court and said, okay, White, now you reply however you want. And now Black has to be prepared for every single possible white reply after Bishop B4. It does the same thing as the Red Lopez. It's putting indirect pressure on the center. It hasn't uh, dictated how he's going to finish developing these pieces over here. He could still play B6. He could still play D6. He could still play C5. All these options are still open and on the table for, for Black, giving him the most flexibility possible on how he's going to deploy his pieces. He could even play Knight E4 and F5. And certainly, depending on what it does, Black's going to choose perhaps a different plan in each individual case. And white has a lot of options on how to reply here. White can play queen c2, white can play a3, white can play e3, white can play bishop g5, white can play knight f3, and white can even play f3. All these moves are, have been played and all these moves are very playable. And because of that, it makes this a very difficult opening to prepare for black because, again, you have to be very broadly prepared, whereas white maybe has to be very narrowly prepared. One way that you can get around this preparation paradox. And this is used at every level. At the, I would say mostly it's used at the highest levels, um, if the most effectively, is uh, novelties. It's playing moves that are relatively new or relatively unknown that people are unfamiliar with. And what that does is that, again, turns the equation on its head. When you play these novelties, when you play these surprise weapons, it allows you to prepare that novelty or that new move or maybe that crazy move a little bit deeper than your opponent because you're only preparing that novelty. Whereas he has to be prepared for all of the old moves that have been played and there's very little chance that when he was preparing for all those old moves that had played, the thought occurred to him to prepare for a move that had never been played. And that allows you to have very deep preparation in a very specific line and it allows you to avoid both his broad preparation or in some cases his deep preparation. Um, so this is a way around the paradox, and that's why you're constantly seeing people trying to come up with brand new ideas. In further opening videos, what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to show you some of these novelties and some of these ideas. Um, some of them will be relatively sedate, relatively simple. Um, others are going to be totally crazy. And um, But my goal in all of them are, is going to be to give you this advantage of having this deep preparation where you can go much deeper than your opponent and you can beat them with having more knowledge than them, which is really the only way that you can ever win chess games, is to have more knowledge than your opponent about the game of chess and about whatever specific battleground you're deciding to choose. Um, so I hope you watch some of those videos, and um, I'll try to get to them to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you.